Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Mortgage Coach Tuesday call. My name is Dave Savage, CEO of Mortgage Coach, and it's always an honor to do these Tuesday calls. I have a couple amazing guests, and we also have a cool special guest. Uh, so, Kelly Zitlow, welcome to the Mortgage Coach community. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you, and uh, I know you're going to cover the part called the educational borrower experience, but when I was preparing for this call, at the end of the day, it's all about making you know your conversation, the process, and the value and the experience you create for a borrower more referable. Uh, so uh, I know Danny's going to cover that from a realtor standpoint. And Danny, welcome to the call. Thank you, Dave. Good morning, everybody. All right. Well, get ready to rock, guys. I'm going to cover a few things from last week. I'm going to bring Bill Hart in to share something uh, new and exciting that Bill's bringing to the mortgage coach community in just one minute. By the way, Bill, are you on the call yet? I am here, brother. You sound great, as always, Bill. Welcome to the Mortgage Coach community, brother. Thanks, man. It's good to be here. Good. Well, we'll, we'll make our announcement in just a minute, and uh, hopefully you can stay on for a few minutes and add a little color while I'm interviewing Kelly. Happy to do it, bud. All right. So I, I missed last week's call because I was on the road. I uh, had two awesome lacrosse tournaments with my uh, son, who's going to be a freshman in high school next year. So I was in I was in Vail, Kelly. By the way, I was in Denver for a little bit. Uh, hit was in Vail, and then I went out to uh, Baltimore. Uh, I'm really appreciative of Wally, who took on the role of interviewing Denise Donahue. Anybody who missed that call, make sure you check out the the recording of it. The first five minutes, there were some sound issues, so you know get, you get through those. But the content was amazing. And you know, while there's a lot of takeaways, and I may cover those in other calls upcoming, to me, a couple of the big ones were it's all about video, video, and video. You know, this was an email that Denise sent over to me a couple days ago, where she had a, a borrower. You know, I love this quote. Said, "Thank you for the information, and the video was an amazing uh, tool to educate an old guy like me." So, Kelly, I know you, you love that because you're all about video, and Danny, you're going to talk about that. But I, I just want to bring that from last week into this week. Using the Mortgage Coach video to deliver value is super important, super valuable. I am going to put a couple links into chat. Wally was kind enough. Wally also created a tool for video. Hi, Dave. We just ran. We're losing your Say that again, Marcy. There you go. You're back. Oh, thanks for. Okay, thanks for the heads up, Marcy. Uh, so I'm going to put this in chat. So with that said, I'm going to bring Bill Hart. Bill, why don't you kind of frame, kind of announce what we're doing? I'll add some color to it. And let's over the next three minutes, you know, make the announcement, and then we'll bring Kelly in for the interview. Absolutely, happy to do it, and uh, super excited, Kelly, that you are on uh, board today. I am a huge Get Kelly Zitlow fan, and uh, can't can't wait to hear what you have to share. And also excited that uh, just started coaching Denise Donahue actually last week. She's uh, She's one of those people that if I if I can get involved in, in somebody's life who's that fired up and doing so many cool things already, uh, that just brings me great joy. So super excited to be working with the mortgage nerd. So yeah, Dave, so, so here's what we're doing. Um, I want to give credit where credit is due. It was about 20 years ago, even a little more than that, when I had left, I was working for Mike Ferry, who for those of you that don't know, would be Tom Ferry's dad. And uh, to say that it wasn't a great fit would, would be uh, a good way to summarize that. And so I was exploring opportunities. I had met Todd Duncan. He and I both had dark hair at the time. And Todd was looking for a way to present, uh, to, to provide value to mortgage lenders and, and bring in a speaker. And he said, you know, I'd, I'd love it if you could be that guy, but you don't have an individual top producer story as a realtor, even though I had managed real estate offices and recruited. He said, why don't we do this? Why don't you go interview top producing realtors? And so 20 some odd years ago, we started Reps, the real estate performance system. Some of you that have been around the industry a long time would remember that. And 
it's kind of come and gone, and it came up as a new iteration a few years ago, and I sort of ran it. And anyway, at the end of the day, Dave and I had a conversation a while back and both talked about taking it up a notch. They had always been audio. For years, they were cassette tapes. Yes, cassette tapes. Then they became CDs and then MP3s. And I've always known that you know we were leaning towards video. And, D and Dave, you're always the guy that brings me brings me the greatest encouragement around technology and what's possible and what can be done. And so we got together and uh, have created a video version now, real estate interviews. And the very first one you can see there is Amanda Todd. This is a realtor in Northern California who's only been in the business two years and has done, I don't know, 30 some odd million, really doing some cool things. But the, the idea of me being able to use my basic skill set, you do anything for 20 plus years, and you're going to have to get pretty good at it, right? Be able to take that basic skill set, match it with the mortgage coach team's ability to produce awesome content. And we've got for you guys, for the mortgage coach community, as a value add, these interviews each and every month. And so, Dave, the last thing that I would say is just I, I would love to chat with them a little bit about best practices if we have time for that. If we don't, we can do it another time. Your call. Yeah, well, first of all, I want to net out for the mortgage coach community. Everybody knows Bill Hart. I mean, I've interviewed Bill a number of times. Bill has interviewed, you know, how many realtors over how many years, Bill? Just a guess. Well, it's, it's over 200 agents over 20 years. I forget the exact number, but yeah, a lot. So he's got a unique perspective in terms of really understanding a real estate agent and bringing those takeaways to life. And then, you know, think about it, he's a coach for loan officers, you know, and how long have you been coaching loan officers and how many loan officers do you think you've coached over the years? Yeah, you know, it's been 13 years, um, I don't know, man, hundreds of LOs. I think we estimate 20,000 hours in the coaching chair. So I, I personally don't know anyone who's got a better perspective on both sides of the fence, the mortgage and the real estate professional. So for me, a mortgage coach, it's just super awesome to have Bill interviewing awesome agents and, and then making those available to the mortgage coach community through RateWatch. And uh, so stay tuned. You know, every month, Bill's going to interview someone amazing, and then you're going to be able to share that interview with your agents. Uh, my hope is that we'll be interviewing a lot of agents who are working with mortgage coaches. So Kelly and Danny, if there is a realtor that you would like Bill to interview, please forward that realtor to myself and Bill. And for any mortgage coach that's on this call, you know, it's got to be the kind of folks that I would interview on a call like this. So it's got to be someone who is a top producer. Again, you don't need to be doing 20 plus loans a month, but you need to be a top producer. And, and the agents that we interview need to be top producers. So if you have a if you're a mortgage coach and you have a real estate agent that you think would make a great Bill Hart interview, um, email Bill. Bill, what's the best way for folks to contact you? Super easy, Bill at buildingchampions.com. And you know, kind of an arbitrary line in the sand, Dave. I've always said 60 units a year because any realtor in any community that's doing five units a month. Is, is good healthy volume. I mean, you know, the, my, my next interview I think is doing 300 units a year, but 60 a year minimum, that's a good, that's a good bar. Awesome. Uh, so, and you can also please put me in the loop at dave at mortgagecoach.com. So, hey, Bill, let's do some Bill Hart best practices as you continue to be more active in the mortgage coach community. I really want to transition to Kelly. Uh, feel free to add some color ask Kelly some questions. Kelly, you know, for the rest, for the next 20, 25 minutes, it's all about you. And Danny, please jump in, ask Kelly questions, make sure you, this is a great interview as we unpack Kelly's educational bar experience. Uh, first, Kelly, any comments about the new video that we're bringing into the community for Mortgage Coach, and then we'll, we'll get into our conversation? Yeah, I am so excited. I don't know if you guys have watch what Bill's done over the years. Certainly I'm a big fan and have been following those, but I always find value when you're doing those interviews, Bill, because it kind of gets me into the minds of the realtor, which is where we loan professionals really want to be. You know, we want to better understand what their needs are, et cetera. So thanks so much for doing that. 
My pleasure, Kelly. You know, I had a I was in speaking to an audience in Australia years ago and I had a mortgage lender there and he said he said, Well here's the deal, Bill. If you want to catch the hunted, you gotta learn to think like the prey. <laughs> right? <laughs> so let's get our heads inside their world and that's the way to do it. Kelly, thanks for the comment so much. Can't wait to hear what you've got to share today. Awesome. All right. So All hey right, Kelly, Dave. for those yeah, so for those that don't know you, just tell us what market you're in. I'm going to show a slide right here with, you know, you sit at your desk. So, you know, you obviously do a lot of loan volume. But tell us a little bit about your practice, and then let's talk about an educational bar experience. Yeah, so I'm in the Phoenix Scottsdale market in Arizona, and uh, I've been lending for 20 years. I like to say that my career has been divided up into two different uh, careers, one prior to 2008, and one after 2008 because, as we all know, we had some market challenges and had to evolve and change and adapt to the new market and the new uh, paradigm. So um, I do about 250 to 300 loans per year, depending on the given year. And I've incorporated Mortgage Coach about uh, a year ago, year and a half ago. And it's just been one of those things that I started to dabble in it early on, and then it's just exploded. So it's a big part of what I do today. Well, let's let's talk about that because you know when I interviewed for you for the first time last year, which by the way, if anybody did not hear that interview, I mean it was it was really fantastic. It was all about how you leverage video to educate families. So great, Kelly Zitlow video. Uh, it was one of the best of 2015. But why don't you why don't you describe to us what is an educational lending experience, and then let's break it down from a mortgage coach perspective. So I think educational. My my purpose, my mission with every client is to provide an honest, well communicated, and knowledge based lending experience. That's what I do. That's what I've actually done my whole career, um, and the mortgage coach part of that helps me to really be able to connect the dots with my mission statement, which is that knowledge-based lending experience. There is so many factors and variables that we all know, and it is hard for the average person to really digest everything that we do, the options, the pros and cons, the tax benefits, et cetera. And so Mortgage Coach was one of those things that I said, gosh, you know what, instead of sending fee uh, worksheets out of Encompass or Points or whatever LOS you use, there, there has to be an easier way. So that led me to Mortgage Coach, but honestly, I will tell you the video part of Mortgage Coach, I think, is as impactful as the actual presentation itself. Really? I like, oh, to, yeah. I, I like, to, I, I like to hear that. So well, let's, yeah. let's do something, because I, I, I know a lot of times when I hear from Mortgage Coaches, it's, you know, they, they know how to present the Mortgage Coach. You know, they know how to show options but you know let's let's go through your experience before mortgage coach then let's you know talk about what you're presenting how you're presenting it what you would say to the family and then obviously as I'm showing here this is one of your mortgage coach videos let's kind of I don't want to say end on that but I think you know getting folks you know into the experience is where a lot of people fall down so I guess my first question is how many of your folks you know fill out something online before you even provide the mortgage coach? What does it look like at the front end of your process? Yeah, I would say probably 60% of the applications we're receiving today are online applications. Okay, so 60%. Um, yeah. and, then, and then what percentage are coming into your office and you know, you're meeting with face-to-face -face in some shape or fashion? less than 10% these days. And that's been a big shift in my business. So it used to be that I would meet with every client. And today with technology and schedules and everything else, you know, technology has kind of bridged that gap where we can do a lot of what we do in our role online, over the phone, and via video. And again, that's where that video really becomes another way to connect with people, break down barriers, and kind of summarize as well as build trust in that presentation at the pre-qualification stage. Hey Kelly, this is Bill, and I've just I've got a question for you because I here's here's what here's what I think um, community members are thinking right now and and not articulating, and it's the same thing that when they heard Josh Metal, it's like okay, so when you look like a movie star, 
<laughs> you you do video, right? But what if I don't? And and so my question, not to you know make you feel awkward, but I, it's just truth. I think when you're when you're camera friendly, it, it's easy for people to rationalize that. Well, okay, whatever. I can't really do that like that. I tell people all the time when I shoot video, I still have an internal image that I'm 35 years old with dark hair and no wrinkles, right? And when I watch my video, it's like, wow, who's the old guy? But I don't care anymore because I realize that's the same person somebody's going to see at a seminar that I do or sitting across a desk from me. Here's my question for you. For somebody who's listening right now and saying, ah, you know, I'm using Edge, but I'm really not comfortable with the video component yet, what, what are one or two things that you would share with people to say, this really helped me get rolling with video? Well, believe it or not, Bill, I still, early on when I started doing video, I had a big struggle with myself. I don't like my voice on video. I would be so highly critical that I would just be like, oh my God, what am I doing with my eye? Why is it, you know, blinking? I mean, and, and really, it becomes a point in your brain where you just have to turn off all of that stuff and realize that whether you're doing video or whether you're meeting somebody face to face, how you talk, how you sound, whatever, you know, eye blinky thing that you have, that's what they see. That's what they know. That's what they're connecting to. So again, face to face or video, it's all the same. What holds us back is our brain, right? We get in our own way when it comes to these videos. I see it and hear it all the time. You just gotta push through it. So mortgage coach community, hear that? You're all all of us. We are our own worst critics. And that yeah. little devil is going to sit on your shoulder and say, I don't like the way you look. I don't like the way you sound. You goofed up there. One of the best things you can do, and Kelly, I'll bet you would agree with this, in video, you don't have to be perfect, right? I think sometimes we hold ourselves to a standard where it's like, I've got to be perfect. And I'm telling you, you um, you uh, you make a little mistake and you laugh over it. And what it actually does is it makes you more human and more approachable. Yep. I don't want perfect. People want you, right? They want the authentic you. So be you. Great job. Thanks for that, Kelly. Yeah, love it. Love it, Kelly. And by the way, folks, I am playing a video right now that Kelly created as a gift for the Mortgage Coach community. So I'm going to put a link to this in the chat of the GoToMeeting. Uh, and Kelly, why don't we just talk a little bit, it's, I think it's a good segue from where Bill took it into how you do video. And then I know one of the other things that's unique about your educational process is that you're creating more than one video throughout the process for a mortgage coach. So why don't you just describe that and speak to that for members. Sure. So I'll address how I do video. So I do it um, on my computer. Uh, I go ahead and just do the mortgage coach analysis, kind of get my thoughts about where we are with the client, where I left off on the conversation, and then I'm doing a quick video at the pre-qualification stage, sometimes sending it with their pre-qualification letter, sometimes sending it uh, before or after, just depending on the situation. And really, I'm just kind of doing the video to summarize, here's where we are, here's where we're going, here's next steps. Uh, so it's brief. I never shoot more than three videos on a particular cost analysis. So if I start it and I completely flub or I lose my train of thought, uh, I know I've got two left and I've got to go with one of those. So you can't get too focused on, oh, that wasn't perfect because you'll be sitting there all day doing one video. That's not productive. So I give myself three shots, usually uh, get it done in one to two these days. And again, I'm just really kind of connecting with that client and setting them up for next steps in the process. Beautiful. So, by the way, takeaway for everybody, no more than three. By the way, Danny, do you have a similar philosophy, you know, in terms of how many videos you'll create when you add a video to a total cost analysis? Uh, absolutely. I mean, if you sit and watch them, um, if you watch yourself, you will re-record it. I, I, I've done it way too many times and, and learned my lesson. So I, I'll do it. If I completely screw up, uh, I'll do it again. But yeah, th three is the limit, and you just have to move on. And to, to reiterate, um, you know, kind of what Kelly and uh, Bill said, um, actually it's a quote from Roberto Monaco. Um, we had him uh, visit our, our um, one of our uh, Lunch and Learns one time, and um, it just struck me so hard. He just looked at the room and said, that's what you look like. And that's the truth. That's what you look like. You just got to, you just got to roll with it. Um, and, uh, I think I'm, I'm the, uh, the counterbalance to, to Kelly's, um, 
movie star look, uh, which probably is a, a pretty pretty nice fit here. And I do videos 100% of the time. It, it's absolutely mission critical to get it done. Yeah, no, I'm on the other side too, too, Danny. And uh, at the end of the day, if you are a, a good salesperson, if people like you and trust you, um, put it on video. You know, that's, that is what you look like when you communicate with families. And, and the, the more you can put that in front of the families, the better. So Kelly, let's, you know, I know one of the things I did when I wanted to prepare for this call is I wanted to get as much value from you and Danny as possible. So Danny created some total cost analysis videos that are going to be great for everyone. You created this how you create a video. You also both provided your checklist. And I really do want to get in front of the mortgage coach because while the mortgage coach total cost analysis I do think is the most profound and valuable way you can educate and deliver value to a family with a TCA. I mean, there are other touch points. So why don't you, you describe, you know, the checklist part of it, just so, you know, and by the way, everyone, we have put a copy of this checklist in the GoToMeeting um, handout section. So within GoToMeetings and within the handout section, you can download this. But walk us through the checklist part of your educational process. So uh, during the pre-qualification part of the process, when somebody applies online, uh, the next steps are we're going to set up a phone call, kind of walk through the online application, um, talk about next steps with regard to pulling credit, asking you know any questions that maybe are unclear in that application. And then from there, we're going to um, prepare the homework list. Uh, we're going to prepare a uh, secured encrypted email that they can upload their documentation if they choose to do so or, or tell them where to drop it by the office if they want to come by. And then we're preparing the mortgage coach analysis at that point with a video. So the pre-qualification letter, if we're at that point, goes out. If not, mortgage coach together with the homework list and just kind of next steps in the process. I'm a big next steps person, so I use that phrase a lot from the beginning to really down to the point where they get their keys. Got it. So what would you say, to, you're going to, let's say you, you met with the person and you have the information and you're going to forward them this information along with the total cost analysis. What do you say to the family so that when they get that link, they actually click on it? You know, it's not just a link that they don't know what to do with, but, but how do you get it so that the family actually clicks on the link, whether it's from a mobile device or on their desktop and actually, you know, watches your video? Any, anything that you say, any scripting you want to provide? Yeah, I actually just have a template email, and I've played with this over time to uh, lead them to the point where they actually open the video, because there was a point in time where it's all about the words and how you're setting them up. So during the phone conversation, I'm going to say, I'm going to put together a cost analysis for you. I'm going to send you a link. I've got this great uh, presentation that's going to just kind of walk you through the different options that we talked about today. And then again, I reaffirm that in the email template that goes out. I do a link where they just link directly to the mortgage coach cost analysis, and it takes the client right in there. I also do a little phrase in that email that just kind of educates them as to they are going to need to download it, et cetera, so they're not surprised that they have to download something. Got it. Um, any chance you would mind forwarding just a generic version of that email so I could share it as a follow-up uh, next week? And if anybody on your team is listening or maybe, you know, Danny is listening, if you could forward something over that we could share. Yeah, no problem. Happy to. Okay. Okay. So, so that's good. Now, Bill, I know you've got to jump off the call real quick. Um, you're not here for the whole time. Any any other questions you want to ask Kelly or you know commentary you want to provide before you need to jump? No, I'm just I'm just fired up about hearing this process and I just I want to encourage people who are plugged in and listening right now to recognize this this is pro level tips, right? This is like if you could go to a golf course and you could listen right now to Rory McIlroy or if you could go listen to you know any top pro in their endeavor and say, wow, those one or two things that Kelly is doing or that Danny's about to share that I could apply to my business, just don't look for reasons that it won't work. Figure out a way to apply it. You are in the presence of greatness right now. That's the beauty of these calls. Well played, Dave. Kelly, so good to connect with you again. It's been too long. Danny, good to meet you virtually. I'm out of here. Got to go do my coaching thing. But uh, it's such a pleasure to officially be a part of the community. I've been a friend for a long time. Now I'm actually part of the community.
Bill, well, well, you've always been a part of the community, but we're looking forward to your next realtor interview. And everybody on this call, stay tuned in Rate Watch. We're going to make it easier than ever for you not only to watch that video, get value as a, as a top producing loan officer, but so you can forward that video to all your real estate agents. And again, remember to everybody, you know, email Bill if you have a realtor you want him to interview. Um, make sure you put me in the loop on that. So, Kelly, before we bring Danny in, Let's, um, let's transition, you know, when you look at all the different touch points. Bill, did you want to say one more thing? Okay, lost Bill. Uh, so when you think of all the different touch points within the process, you talked about how you're, you know, you're providing it at the front end, you're providing it with the prequal. I know that you're doing, um, you're updating that video sometimes. When are you updating it and what are you doing when you do that? So when we received the contract in, prior to sending out the initial set of loan disclosures with the loan estimate, I'm doing a cost analysis based on that particular property and the contract terms. And this has probably been the biggest eye-opener and wow for me. Because what I'm doing in that video is really just setting them up again for next steps. So you're going to be receiving your initial disclosures. There is a new loan estimate in that package. Uh, it is a government form. It's got some nuances to it that could be a little confusing. So again, I'm already kind of addressing what they're going to see prior to them seeing it and summarizing their estimated cash to close based on the contract, the closing date, etc. And I just had a, a client email me over the weekend and she just said, oh my gosh, I just feel so good about this. Thank you so much for the video. I understand everything. And, and you know, it was just kind of that confirmation that we're on the right track with implementing Mortgage Coach more than once. And uh, I know Todd Bookspan does a great job at doing Mortgage Coach on annual reviews, and that's really kind of the direction of the process for me, I think, on the long run is three to four Mortgage Coaches throughout the entire life of that client, truly. So pre-call, contract, post-closing, and then on the annual review commentary. All right, so everybody get that. So, by the way, I am having uh, Todd Bookspan on next Tuesday's call. We're going to really deconstruct and break down the annual review. Todd's going to share some of his best practices. But it sounds like, Kelly, what you're doing it right now is at the front end, you know, providing options, and then at least – how often are you updating that video a second time? Is that – what percentage of the times are you finding that happening? On my contract video, 98% yeah. of the time they're getting a video with a cost analysis prior to receiving their initial set of loan disclosures. Very, very focused on that because we're receiving such great feedback. And I just, again, think it's breaking down the barriers. We're calming fears. We're uh, showing that we've got this. We're in control. We're building that trust. And, and it's just such an emotional roller coaster for people. I think sometimes those of us that have been doing this so much, we get just desensitized to it, and, and it doesn't really matter the level of the client. There's still a lot of emotion going on, so the video is just a great connector. So what about the second time where you're updating a video a second time within the process? What percentage of the time? That's what I'm referring to. So the second time oh, okay. is at contract, it. And, okay. and I do that 98% of the time. Yeah, I mean, it's, okay. that is my mission, yeah. Okay, I wanted to make sure I got it. Um, other thing I want to make sure before, and again, Kelly, you know, we're going to continue to go back and forth. I do want to bring Danny in in just a minute, but I know you're also creating specific videos that you're uploading into YouTube. Why don't you describe your strategy here and how you use this as part of your educational process with families? Yeah, so I create a, a weekly video update that goes out to the real estate community. I've been doing this for years. Um, and. Uh, my goal is to give a two-minute or less update on just, you know, what impacts the real estate process, uh, what realtors need to know, uh, maybe something, a real-life story that happened that they can learn from. And it's really just providing relevant information. Uh, that I, I'm a big educator. I, that's what I'm passionate about. So I've been doing that for many, many, many years. And obviously, the videos have evolved over time. Um, but that's, that's the mission. Then my clients get a 
monthly video update. So my past clients just kind of get a general what's going on in the market, not specific to them in particular, but specific to a consumer as opposed to a realtor. Again, all video. Got it. Love it. So folks, um, if you have questions for Kelly, feel free to post those in the question section of go to the GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, I'm going to bring Kelly back in in just a minute. I am going to transition to Danny. You know, so we've we've talked about the educational bar experience. By the way, Kelly, one more one more thing. If you thought of, you know, four steps to an educational process, you know, for everybody who's on this call, what would be like a checklist of, you know, maybe it's three, maybe it's five things. You know, obviously a mortgage coach total of house analysis video is one of them. But what are what are three to four other things that everybody should consider? when really evaluating their sales process as a mortgage professional as to whether it's educational or whether it's just transactional? Well, I, I mean, again, I think having a system in place, whatever that system is, and following that system consistently is part of the process. So if you are somebody that's highly technical and you use tools like Mortgage Coach um, or other tools, because heaven knows we mortgage people have a, access to all the different types of neat, fun uh, tools, but whatever that is, just creating a consistent system. So we have a checklist that we just kind of go through based on the online app or the face-to-face -face app or whatever type of app it is, all the way through to the closing process. So we have certain touch points we want to do, and I, I really would just tell you it's a system and it's being consistent with whatever system works in your environment. Okay, so that's one. I'm going to try to pull one more out of you. So are you sitting at TCA? Are you being consistent? What's one more thing that might be on the checklist of are you just, you know, taking apps or are you educating? One more thing for me. Well, I, think, I think listening, right? So having some time uh, with the nice. clients, even if it's over on the phone, I mean, what are their goals? Because we can do cost analysis all day long, but unless we're really listening to what they're telling us and really paying attention, then we're not serving them and we're not truly educating them. So if somebody's telling me, I've got two kids, they're twins, they're getting ready to go to college, unfortunately we don't have the funds to you know, support that, then my approach to the cost analysis is obviously going to be different than maybe what they're telling me that they want to put 30% down, right? So maybe we explore that and respond to their needs as opposed to a pat answer. I like it. So one and two. If you think of the third one before the call's out, you'll get another chance, Kelly. Sounds good. All right. So let's bring in Danny. So, you know, Danny, you are crushing it in the San Diego market. Just give us some perspective on your volume, your team, and your market, and then let's get into how you're making your borrower experience referable. Excellent. And I'm perfect transition, Kelly, because really if there's one, one single concept to creating a referable experience, it's consistency. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can operate at an extremely high level and refine all your skills and be and you know introduce the total cost analysis in your real real presentations. At the end of the day, whatever you're doing, if you're doing it consistently to the degree that the realtor community can count on you to do what you say you're going to do, and and you build that foundation of trust, you have a referable experience because trust is where everything begins and ends in in a referable. Uh, experience. So, uh, kind of that we do. Our team use a a lot of systematic uh, tools. We use a lot of technology to really take the guesswork out of out of what that experience is going to look like. So it, it's very scripted. Uh, it's very systematic, but it's not scripted in the to the uh, in the sense that you know, everything is very prescribed and you say exactly these things at this time. We have kind of conceptual scripting and and the um, kind of next level after you, you have a consistent kind of trust-based process is to make sure that you really care about the outcome for the person that you're trying to communicate with. Uh, so when you're meeting with a real estate agent and you're sharing with them strategies that they can use to grow their business and you're sharing with them the total cost analysis tool that you'll be, you know, at using to educate their client to make them a more competent home buyer. You really genuinely have to care about whether or not that person's business grows, and how, and not so much that you're going to be getting their deals as that happens, but really look at them as a partner and say, you know, how are we going to do this together, and what are things that we can work on together to 
get better and grow and raise the bar of professionalism in both the real estate community, the financial planning community, the mortgage community, all the places where we're, we're touching these people at really critical times in their lives. And uh, as far as the um, referable experience goes, uh, as it relates to the you know, Mortgage Coach Edge total cost analysis, there's a couple of very specific things that we bring to the table when we're meeting with uh, a real estate agent. And I've introduced to Dave a couple of those uh, tools, uh, sent links, and I believe you shared those. Um, and there's been a lot of questions and feedback on, on these two kind of um, total cost analysis concepts, which are the counter offer proposal and the, uh, the cross qualification analysis. Uh, and these are two uh, total cost analysis presentations just concepts, really, that we share with the realtors 100% of our initial meetings. And, and based on the um, coaching advice from Jeremy in, in the call from a couple weeks ago, we're actually scheduling meetings to kind of revisit some of the um, established relationships we have just to kind of uh, solidify you know, how, how it's going and, and you know, may, maybe introduce different changes that we've made to the process of, of those, um, you know, how we use those tools and why we find them to be important. So which one do you want to do first? Do you want to do the cross call first or do you want to do the uh, counter offer first and just explain it and how you're making it referable for realtors? Which one? Well, we'll do it in the order that we do it in the presentation, which is we do the, the um, counter offer proposal first. So okay, the, let's, the, let's, let's the, go to that. The main reason we present the counter offer proposal in, in that meeting, now let's, let's back up and say, you know, you're meeting with a realtor and you're trying to, you've, you've already earned the opportunity to sit down with them. They're, they're giving you their time. Um, you've done something to earn that opportunity. Uh, and you want to share with them as quickly as you can that you have value to provide to their client that the next person doesn't have to offer or you have to, a, a different way to offer to them. And what we found that most realtors in particular want is to, what is obvious, they want to close more houses. They want to they want to sell more houses to their uh, prospective buyers. They want to be more effective in their listings, closing them faster, having fewer uh, fall out of escrow. So the uh, counteroffer proposal analysis addresses the first piece, the the buy side uh, of the equation. And what a lot of realtors in in our market and and very likely many markets are facing right now is that there's very very low inventory. So almost every uh, offer is coming with multiple offers. So every house is coming with multiple offers. So what ends up invariably happening is you have this very excited buyer, they make an offer for a house, and then the seller comes back and says, well actually we got a bunch of people interested, so we're going to take advantage of this opportunity and charge you an extra $10,000. And the first thing that buyer does is they, they, they freak out. They pause, they say, oh my gosh, $10,000 is so much money, we really need to think about this, and they're scared. They're, it affects them emotionally, and instead of revisiting the numbers, a lot of times they'll just freak out and they'll back out of the transaction, which puts the realtor back in their car, driving around, spending their time when they knew in their heart that that was that client's dream home. They evaluated all their you know, needs and uh, must-haves and must-nots-haves, and they, they put them in that house they knew it was the one. And what we can do with the total cost analysis tool is take the emotion out of that decision-making process. They, when, when the client comes back to the agent and says, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out over this $10,000, I don't know what to do, um, they're, they feel like the seller's trying to take advantage of the marketplace and all these other things, you know, we've all heard it so many times, we can say, well, let's pause here. Okay, we get all that stuff, and, and you're right, we definitely, you know, $10,000 is the amount of money we need to really dig into and appreciate uh, what that's going to do for you, but before you make a decision that you can't take back, let's really dig into the numbers. And that's where the counter offer proposal comes in. We pull up the the uh, total cost analysis tool, and we put some side-by-side -side proposals. We put their original offer, and then the offer that they've been given by the, the uh, seller, the counter offer that they received. We show them the payment difference that comes with that, because as consumers, we're driven by cash flow really more than absolute payment. That's why the car dealership, they ask you what you can afford to pay, not how much you want to spend on the car. So really, there's a lot of analogous things that are happening that in a, a real estate transaction that the total cost analysis can really um, help people uh, appreciate better. And then we show them two other uh, possible scenarios. One is that they go back into the market and over the course of the next two to three months, home values rise 
some pretty modest amount, 2%, 3%, something that's really realistic, especially based on the recent history of values. And then we show them, well, let's say the home values do not go up, but interest rates go up a quarter percent, which is entirely possible in the volatile market that we're in right now. It doesn't feel that way recently, especially with all the events that have happened and the, the, the years of opportunity that we've seen in the, in the mortgage market as far as rates are concerned. But absolutely, rates can spike up. If we go back to 2013, when the Fed announced the end of quantitative easing, we lost 75 basis points in rate in, in less than three weeks. That was a pretty uh, uh, measurable amount of cash flow and uh, value that was taken away from our, our home buyers. It can happen, and unexpected things do happen in every financial market. So you share with them, look, you, can, you, you know what the payment's going to be today, and here are two possible future scenarios both of which are, are worse. And we're not saying these are guaranteed, but what we are saying is that you know what you are getting into if you agree to this counteroffer and you know that this house is right for you and we don't know what the house is going to look like in the future and you might actually be in a position where you're forced to compromise on that decision if one of these very possible scenarios play out. And what ends up happening is you've now replaced their fear with information, you've gotten kind of pass the gatekeeper of decision making and put them back focused on their goal and then they can make a decision whether or not that payment difference really is something that is uh, worth backing out of the transaction for. And realtors love the idea that we can help them sell a house, not just sell a person a mortgage. You know, you just said something I really liked a lot. Kelly, feel free to weigh in. You said this concept, you've replaced their fear with information. And then again, it also made me think so often, you know, really a differentiator between the best of the best is you replace confusion. And I don't want to say with just information, with, with I'm actually, again, not putting words in your mouth, but at the end of the day, what you're really doing is you're providing them insight. I mean, information is great, but, you know, actionable insight is even better. And that is something that you and Danny, or excuse me, you and Kelly both do a great job of. Kelly, anything you want to weigh in on that uh, so far, just sharing what Danny's doing? You know, one, what do you like of the strategy? And then kind of the takeaway I had, uh, what are your thoughts on that? And do you have any other takeaways? Well, I'm a big fan of Danny's. And I, I think one of the quotes I actually wrote down um, a couple weeks ago when I heard him speak was, a confused Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. You went out for a second, oh, okay. but I hear you, Kelly. Sure. So Danny, one of his uh, quotes that he says is, the confused mind does not act. And I think that that's really what he's talking about here is eliminating the barriers um, and providing that insight and really doing our job in a way that we can connect to what that consumer is needing from us. Everybody needs something a little bit different. And so creating the consistency, but then navigating with the conversation or video is how it all comes together. By the way, Danny, you know, we're putting such a focus on video. What percentage of the time are you using the mortgage coach video and adding some video to um, your TCAs? So 100% of the time in the, um, at, at some phase. So we, we have a policy where we do not let the, let the client or we, we do not want the client to interact with the total cost analysis tool without us in some capacity. So if I'm doing a live, uh, an edge live presentation of the total cost analysis, uh, I will not do a video initially. Uh, but if, if there's not an opportunity to do that, the video go, goes on 100% of the time. That is the replacement of the live presentation. And we're, we're actually shifting more and more towards that just from a capacity standpoint. And then multiple times throughout the pre-approval process, we might update that video. And, and actually, these days, when we're introducing um, the Total Cost Analysis app for mobile, when, when the way we encourage people to download it is we, we say this is such a cool opportunity for us to help you while you are at the house. Uh, you can call our team and actually get updates for the home you're standing in. And all you need to do is download, download this application, and we'll be able to help you with that. And when they're out and kind of mobile is where we'll do quick update videos for the, the home that they're in or the three homes that they're comparing to each other on that Saturday while, while they're out shopping. Uh, and so there's, there's a lot of ways that we can kind of leverage the video in the beginning. And then certainly when they get into contract, um, we're actually in the process of implementing 
uh, some different kind of testing uh, around um, the, the midsection of the process, explaining the um, closing disclosure and loan estimate using the total cost analysis, and that would be another one of our team members actually updating the EDGE presentation uh, in lieu of making a, you know, having a 45-minute live conversation with the client, um, tr trying to put together just a, you know, three to four video to replace that back and forth, and we're seeing if we can get some efficiency out of that. There's so many ways that you can use video to leverage the time of your, your own personal time and the time of your team and allow it to be uh, repeatable for the client without you having to be the one injecting that time every, um, every moment they want uh, to go over those details again. So, so hey, you said something I want to make sure everybody really caught. You, you, one of the things you're using to, to get folks to drive the download of the video is you're, you're telling them that they, you know, they can have it so when they're out in the house, they get the information. Could you use your, you, know, the, you had some language I want to make sure I capture, some scripting that I want to make sure everybody hears again. What are you saying in order to get them to download the app so they have it when they're out looking for houses? Use your language, your scripting as much as possible. So this goes to back to, uh, it's a, kind of a carry forward to Kelly's comment about, you know, how do you get them to open the link uh, and, and when that happens. So I'll, I'll go, uh, you know, kind of touch a little bit on that. So we will get the full loan application and collect as much of their documentation as we can leading up to the total cost analysis consultation or presentation. And, the, and in, in leading up to that moment, so here's probably the, the even more context behind this. I am so psyched about sharing the total cost analysis with our clients that they can sense my excitement about it. And when we tell them they have to pass through all these gates before they can get to that moment, they're kind of like, man, what is this guy's deal? Why is he so psyched about us getting to this whole total cost analysis thing that we have to do all this work ahead of time? Well, we want to provide them with something that we genuinely feel is valuable to them as a counterbalance to all the crap that they have to do before they actually are pre-approved and have the opportunity to get this advice from us. So then in, in that same vein, you know, again, super psyched about the opportunity to have this mobile tool where while they're in the home, they can actually view uh, details about monthly payment and closing costs and things of that nature. So we, we tell them, as, they're, as they get the link, you know, I ask them, are you going to be doing this on your computer or on a mobile device? 90% of the time it's mobile device. And I say, oh, that is so awesome. You're going to have, a, and actually this is a great opportunity because when you when you uh, try to open the link, it's going to invite you to download an application called Mortgage Coach Edge, uh, and that what that's going to allow you to do is both view well, the presentation that we've shared with you today, but also any future updated presentations that we do, and you can actually imagine yourself being in the house that you're shopping for and me updating or one of our team members updating the presentation so you can see what that payment would look like as you're standing in the home. So leveraging the mobile and the video and the total cost analysis, kind of tying it all together with a, with a lot of genuine emotion around that opportunity. Well, I, I think the big takeaway is just ask your client this question. I mean, there's a lot, and, and, and have the energy and excitement that Danny has. I mean, well, when I really break down what he said over the past two minutes, there's probably about five things that I would break down from a teachable standpoint. But asking the question, and then having the passion and excitement are probably the two most important. Uh, so if you're not asking this question to your families before forwarding them the total cost analysis, make sure that you start doing it. If you haven't walked your realtors through you know, a counter um, offer analysis, make sure you do it. If you don't know how to do one of these, come to our Thursday training this week, and we'll make sure we cover that for you. So hey, Danny, we've only got about 10 more minutes. I want to make sure we get to your other strategy. So if you don't mind, let's, uh, let's jump to the other strategy, the cross-qualification analysis. Let's try to nail that in about five minutes or so. So we have a, about five minutes to sync up with you and Kelly. Sounds great. And uh, yeah, definitely can do it, do it quick. So the counteroffer analysis addresses the buyer side. The, the cross-qualification analysis addresses the listing side. So again, you're meeting with the agent. They want to... Uh, close more houses with buyers, and they want to sell their listings faster with less headaches. And that's where the cross-qualification analysis comes in. So you, um, the assumption here is that you're doing an effective 
uh, having an effective meeting with a realtor where you're asking them what their pain points are and you're learning about their business, you're learning what their expectations are for a, um, for a, a uh, lender relationship and, and business partnership. And then in, in the midst of that, they will very likely say that they're going to, that they really want to see their business focus on listings, which previously for a lender, that's like, well, oh crap, right? My, my business is with buyers, it's not with listings. So all the best agents trans transition to the listings and then I'm out. Well, you don't have to be out because you can still provide them with a tremendous amount of value because the standards of pre-approval in the mortgage industry are non-existent. And w what a experienced agent will know is that many of their uh, listings are falling out of escrow because the lender on the other side did a terrible job vetting out their buyer or it was a terrible communicator or some other aspect of, of their job that they just were not effective at, either because they didn't have the skills to do so or the company that they worked for didn't equip them properly uh, to execute in the timelines or whatever it might be. So we share with them, you know, we have these other tools and processes to execute well around uh, a real estate transaction, close on time and do all these things. And in fact, we can help you provide context to your seller by doing a cross-qualification. And what a cross-qualification does is allows us to, and any buyer that comes in that's serious about purchasing the home would then get pre-approved with our team. Then when the listing agent sits down with their seller, they can show them both the, all the offers, prices, and then say, I have a consistent analysis of all of these three buyers uh, uh, loan approval uh, qualifications and where they stack rank uh, between each other. And sometimes what they'll find is, the person with the highest offer has the weakest loan, and they'll choose not to go that direction. And they, they give their client, the seller, that very valuable advice that that money, it, it doesn't exist to them if the home doesn't close. And they can go, just like a, a seller would often, often choose a cash offer that was lower over a finance offer, now they have some context. The cash used to be the only context that they ever had, because everybody knew what that was, and the loans were all a mystery whereas the cross-qualification provides that agent with the value of knowing all these pre-approvals are done consistently with the same level of analysis. And I, I can tell you every single week we do cross-qualifications where the buyer is in fact not approved and they did not know it until they talked with us. And they were, they were making offers actively on homes and it is such a shame that they were spending their time and their realtor's time when they had no business being in the market at the price point that they were at. Uh, and, and again, those are the stories that help us communicate to the agents that we really do have value to provide. And then in, in the process of doing the cross-qualification, again, that, that professionalism, the genuine care and interest and a positive outcome for the client comes through. The use of the total cost analysis tool raises the bar in the mind of the, uh, that, that client who's purchasing the home. And it, the intention of the cross-qualification is not to capture these buyers and provide value to the, to the listing agent and allow us to get their buyer referrals as part of that business relationship. Inevitably though, because of the use of these tools and the high bar professionalism that we bring relative to the marketplace, some of those buyers will find that they prefer to work with our team because they were provided with information like the total cost analysis uh, insight that they were not getting anywhere else and, and didn't even know what they were missing out on. Love it. So everyone, uh, Danny, you know, I interviewed Danny, you know, multiple times. He's covered this particular strategy multiple times. I'm putting a few of those links in um, GoToMeeting so you can download those and check those out. Uh, also wanted to just, you know, while we're, while we're here, go through, you know, our, the playlist that we have in our um, mortgage coach um, what do you call it? Mortgage Coach Channel. So you, if you go through this, you'll notice that there are, you know, 66 videos on how to do this, how to do that. All of our videos on scripts. The one I wanted to just shine a light on while Danny was doing this is the Realtor Strategies. Um, so make sure you check that out if this is something you want to learn more on. And also, if you want to learn how to do this strategy, we'll cover the cross qual. And the other strategy Danny went over today, the counteroffer analysis, will cover both of those on this Thursday's training. So either come yourself or make sure you bring your production partner. So folks, we've got about five minutes left. 
Uh, Kelly, you know, anything you want to, you know, any quotes you wrote down, any takeaways or just questions for Danny? So one thing that I really want to learn more about, and I'm going to go to the Mortgage Coach website to hear about some of your past uh, topics and discussions on this, Danny, but so are you with certain agents that you're working with, you're doing a total cost analysis for when they're holding open houses, or are you doing it on all of their listings, or how do you handle the capacity requirements or the staffing needs to be able to do that with really as much production as you guys do. So do you have certain people that just do that for the listing agents and then certain people that prepare the actual cost analysis for the client? Kind of walk me through how the staff looks. So great, great question. And the answer is um, probably more complicated than the time that we have. But I can assure you there is a massive, massive team uh, behind everything that we're doing. Uh, and yes, we have, with each of our realtor partners, um, ha we've aligned them with what we call a front-end loan partner. And that's the, that's the person who's helping uh, calculate income, work up the total cost analysis, uh, follow up with uh, leads that are shopping, um, sending out the pre-approval letters. And, and so when the, when the cross-qualification requests come in uh, from the listing agents, Typically, we do that as part of a counteroffer, not in the MLS. Uh, that's something just as a as a tip from somebody that's been doing this a while. I would highly recommend against doing the cross qualification request in the MLS listing. Rather, wait for the uh, listing agent to identify who the who the true candidates are for the home, and then that really narrows the focus of who who you're cross qualifying um, instead of the actually legitimate potential buyers for that home. Uh, and so, yeah, we absolutely have a staff of, uh, of front-end partners who are um, aligned with our, our realtor partners that handle those cross-qualifications. And then when we actually get into contract, we have another um, set of uh, what we call um, personal loan managers, almost like transaction coordinators, that keep the front-end and myself and other, other team members out of, of the kind of day-to-day -day grind of, of actually closing the loan so that we can stay focused on the pre-approval piece. Great. I love it. Yeah, and b by the way, everybody, there is a downloadable version of both Kelly's home loan checklist um, or purchase homework checklist, as she calls it. Danny and team call it the home loan checklist. Those are both downloadable within the handout section of the GoToMeeting. I see, Lewis, you just asked that question. Look at the go to, go to webinar control panel. Uh, there's something where you can add, ask questions, there's something where you can chat, and there's something called handouts. So make sure you download both of their checklists in the handout section. Also, we have our getting started guide in there. Uh, I can't emphasize enough what a valuable resource that is. If you're on this call and you have not downloaded and printed out our getting started guide, it's got a lot of scripts, a lot of checklists, everything you need to do everything that we talked about in this call at least from a reminder perspective. And then uh, remember everyone, I did tell you that we'll, we'll focus on some of the training on our Thursday call this week. If you want to get better at getting realtors and home buyers to download your apps, you want to get better at using the Mortgage Coach app, uh, come to our Wednesday training. So tomorrow we'll be doing a workshop on how to use your mobile device in all the ways that you can as a mortgage coach. So, so Danny and Kelly, we're down to our last five minutes. Um, Kelly, I'm gonna let you go first. Any anything you want to make sure that we cover? Uh, you know, earlier in the call, I asked you what are the keys to an educational borrower experience. You said you said consistency and really listening. Anything you want to add to that, or any takeaways? I think the last piece of the puzzle is just communication. So one of the great things about Mortgage Coach um, cost analysis that I forgot to mention is that I can see when people are going back in and revisiting the cost analysis. So it, again, it's giving me insight into maybe they have questions, maybe it's a great time just to give them a, a call and, and touch base. Um, so I love that feature of the cost analysis, but my, I would end on communication, great communication, which is um, just, again, listening, providing a consistent experience, and um, making sure that they're posted and kept up on next steps throughout the process until they get those keys. Love it. So, so Danny, you talked about the importance of consistency. You know, one of my favorite quotes was, you know, replace 
you know, fear with insight, a confused mind doesn't act. Again, you, you gave us a great takeaway asking your clients, are you going to be viewing this on your computer or your mobile device? Anything else you want to make sure everybody takes away from today's call? Uh, only that consistency is, is best um, created through systems. Um, if you're trying to do it by force of will alone, you know, habits will take over and, and old ways will take over. So find a way to, even if it's just a simple checklist you put out on your desk or something you build out in Excel that you, you know, work through for each and every client, um, you know, start today, uh, get through every single step and, and don't go back to the old way you were doing things. And that system will create the impression out in the world that even though you know chaos is swirling around in your office, that everything's 100% under control and those agents can, uh, can trust that when they give you, when they hook their professional wagon up to yours, you're not going to drive it over a cliff. <laughs> Love it. So folks, I have posted a poll. Let us know what you thought of today's call. If you are a guest on today's call, click the last option uh, requesting a demo. I uh, hope you've got a lot of value from this call. I want to remind everybody to know what's happening at future mortgage coach calls. Go to our website, click on calendar. You know, this is this calendar is updated as we add new folks. So do not hesitate to, to you know go to this, use this, and share it with your team. Again, go to mortgagecoach.com, go to our calendar page, and uh, look forward to having you on many more trainings. This call is a wrap, and Danny and Kelly, thank you so much for the, the time to prepare for today's call. Kelly, super thank you for that awesome training video that you created. Uh, if you have anything else that you'd like to create, you know, we, we, we just can't get enough of that type of inspirational, teachable content. So I really appreciate it. You bet. Happy to. All right, Danny. Danny, I look forward to getting a training video from you one of these days. And please let me know if I can do anything to help you or your team. Appreciate you, Dave. Have a good one, man. Talk to you later. Thanks, Dave. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye, everybody.